Okay, the experiment we're going to do to evaluate the effects of age on cardiovascular fitness is called the Harvard Step Test. And this step test involves having somebody step at a fast rate on a step box for up to five minutes and then recording the heart rate at one minutes, two minutes, and three minutes after the exercise is stopped. So what are you going to need to do this experiment? Well, one, you need two people. There's virtually no way to do this by yourself. So you need one person to record and one person to do the exercise. Now the person doing the exercise should be healthy, they can be of any age, but they need to be healthy and have no cardiovascular complications, no fainting, etc. like that. You also need a step, you probably have steps around your house, or a step box. If we could choose, we'd say that step would be 16 inches in height for females and 20 inches for males, but again, if you're doing this at home, do the best that you can. You do need two timing devices or two stopwatches. One of those will be used to record the duration of exercise because although we want you to do five minutes of exercise, it's probably not going to happen for some people. So we want to make sure that we record the total number of seconds of exercise for each person. The second stopwatch will be used to uh, let us know when it's time to record the resting heart rate. And that's going to be one minute after the exercise is stopped, two minutes after the exercise is stopped, and three minutes after the exercise is stopped. And last but not least, ideally you would have a metronome to keep you going at a cycle of 30 cycles per a minute. Uh, probably most people at home don't have a metronome. So if you don't have a metronome, all you need is a song with a tempo of around 120 beats per minute. Where can you find those songs? Well, simply Google it, and here you can see we've got a lot of Lady Gaga songs are around 120 beats per minute, as well as some Journey songs. You can probably find something you can like Obviously, it would be great if these songs had a duration greater than five minutes so you don't have to reset them, but these can help you walk at the appropriate uh, tempo so that we can keep up with this Harvard step test. Okay, the procedure for this test is a little bit complex. So you want to read through it a couple times to make sure you understand how to conduct the experiment before you get started because it is a strenuous experiment and you don't want to have to redo it again. So first of all, you want to start the metronome or start the music at around that 120 beats per minute tempo. And we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. You then want that participant to step up and down on that step box at the pace of 30 cycles uh, per minute, or that would be one step for every beat of the song, and we'll show you what that looks like. You want to time the duration of the exercise with stopwatch one. So as soon as they start, you hit the start function on that uh, stopwatch and keep an eye on it. And then you want to stop the participant if, one, they feel unwell, uh, if they fall behind in the pace for more than 15 seconds, uh, or they begin to crouch down. Lastly, you want to stop them once they reach five minutes. If they make it to five minutes, that's great. Okay, so at that point, you want to stop, stopwatch one, record the total number of minutes or seconds of exercise, and then you want to immediately stop, start stopwatch two so that you'll know when to record your resting heart rates, and those are down here. So your first resting heart rate will be between one minute and one and a half minutes. Your second one will be between two and two and a half minutes, and the third one will be between three and three and a half minutes. Now we're only measuring for 30 seconds each time. This is where people sometimes mess up and they record a total minute of, of heart rates and that's not correct. So just record from minute one to minute 1.5, minute two to minute 2.5, etc. And we're gonna add all those heartbeats together. So this is what it looks like when we're conducting it in the classroom, right? We have this person and they are stepping up and down on the step box and they're doing 30 cycles per minute and then once they reach uh, fatigue or five minutes, either one, we have them sit down and when we have them record their heart rate uh, at minute one to one and a half, two to two and a half, et cetera. Now, you don't need a stethoscope to do this. It's very easy to palpate the carotid pulse right there and just count the number of beats but you do need that stopwatch right there to make sure that you're only counting for the appropriate amount of time. Okay, so I think I've got everything ready to start our Harvard Fitness Step Test. And again, you're gonna need a step. It could just be a step outside your house. You're gonna need a person with two stopwatches, one to record the total duration of exercise, and the other one to record as soon as you stop, so you know when to record your heart rate, which is at one minute uh, to 1.5 minutes, uh, from two to 2.5, and three to 3.5. And again, you're gonna assess that just by uh, going up here for your carotid pulse. So what I need to do is I'm going to have to step up and down on this uh, 30 times a minute for up to five minutes. Now, if you don't have a metronome at home, and you probably don't, you want to pick a song from that list or Googling another list that has a tempo of 120 beats per minute. So I've already made my selection. I'm going to start my song, and I'll be right back. Wake up in the morning.
morning feeling like Okay, a little bit of cashier to get going today. And I'm gonna take a second to get ready for the beat. My person's gonna be there with a stopwatch. One, two, three, four. One. So I want to keep this up for up to five minutes. It doesn't seem like a lot right now, but in a couple minutes it will be. Okay, so once you get all your data from the experiment entered, your data table should look something like this. You have your age in there, your gender, your heart rate at time one, time two, and time three. And this is at one minute, two minutes, and three minutes of recovery. The important thing is that these are taken at 30 second intervals, so not a whole minute, just 30 seconds worth of data. So what we have there are our heartbeats and recovery time, and then we have our total seconds of exercise. So if I made it all five minutes of stair stepping on there, that would be five times 60 or 300 seconds of exercise. So now I'm gonna apply this equation right here to figure out our fitness level using the Harvard step test. So first of all, let's look at the numerator. The numerator there is fitness equals TE. Well, TE is the total time of exercise in seconds, and then we're gonna multiply that by 100. So we said that our total time of exercise was 300, and we're gonna multiply that by 100. So let's use our trusty calculator here and say 300 times 100 should come up to be something ridiculous like 30,000. So remember, our uh, numerator here is gonna be 30,000. So let's clear that out. Now let's take a look at our denominator. So the denominator is the sum of the heartbeats, uh, and then we're gonna multiply that times two. So let's find out the sum of the heartbeats first. So, whoops, we've got so many calculators open. All right, so first off, we said that our first heartbeat was 90, Okay, and our second heart rate was 70, and our third was 60. Okay, that should come out to be 220. Now, if we multiply that by two, as the equation requires, we're gonna get something like uh, 220 times two equals 440. So 440 is our denominator, and remember what was our numerator again? That's right, it was 30,000. So three, zero, 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 divided by 440 equals 68. And if I go down here at the chart, I can see that 68 is the lower end of average. So I'm average, that's awesome. I'm happy to be average at my age. Okay, and so we just enter that in the table and there we can see that I'm 68. Now, this is just for one person. In order to do this analysis, we actually are gonna need data from several people in the class and several people of different age groups. So I'll show you how to analyze that data in the next slide. Okay, so once your data are analyzed, you wanna go back to the website under 5.4 and click on this table, and that will take you back to our Google Sheets table. Now, the first table you see there is the one we've already entered our data in for uh, looking the effects of body position on heart rate and blood pressure. So we wanna to go to the second table down here, the CV fitness data, click on that, and there you can see the data table calls for your ID, your gender, age, et cetera. So for ID, just write any random three letters in there. It doesn't have to be your true ID. PRG is in there. As long as it's different from the IDs that are above, enter your gender, uh, and then enter your true age. So I'll put my age in there, and then the heart rates and recovery, and that was 90, and then uh, 70, and then 60, and the minutes of exercise, again, was 300, uh, sorry, 300 seconds of exercise, and you can see it automatically calculates that fitness index using this equation up here uh, for the Harvard step test. Lastly, I'm gonna type in here uh, what song I used, and that was TikTok, just so people will know how to write this up in their methods if they use this as a lab report. Finally, you wanna wait for your instructor, that is me, to send you an email and say the data are ready for analysis. When that happens, you'll see these tables uh, below, the summary table will be in yellow, and this yellow table uh, lets you know that it's time to graph, so just select those data, go up and click on the insert chart, and what you should get is an XY scatter graph, and this is exactly what we want with age on the x-axis and fitness on the y-axis. And that's correct because fitness we expect to be dependent on age. Age should be our independent variable. 
So the other thing you want to do is come down here and click on your data points and see if we can add uh, a trend line. So a trend line will tell us whether it's a negative or a positive relationship. I want to stay out of the statistics right here, but if it slopes down, it's a weakly negative relationship. You know, if it was a really strong slope, that would be uh, more uh, highly negative. Uh, if you want to find out how strong the relationship is, you can click on something called the R squared value, which is down here. And uh, you can see the R squared is 0.02%, and that's very low. So again, we don't really teach statistics in this class, but this relationship would not be significant, but it would be weekly negative trend there. Uh, but don't be surprised if you run the data for your class that you might get uh, a very strong relationship, a possibly significant relationship, and that's because um, the outcome of this experiment depends on the number of people included in the experiment as well as the age range. You know, if you have somebody out here that's in their 80s or something like that, that can really be an influential data point. The other thing is some of these people in here that maybe are older uh, are actually healthier because maybe they're working out more than some of the younger people. Uh, we have somebody that's very young right there, but yet their fitness level is very low. So all those points are influential. So don't be surprised if you get a different result when you run the data on your class.